Hey guys, so I just wanted to jump on here really quick and share some of my studies that I've been doing here lately and kind of get some feedback on it because my mind is honestly blown at this point. Um, so a while back I made a video about the genetically modified fish and how I believe that it is going against what God has commanded us to do in the Bible. So in this video, um, they're basically blending different types of fish and making it ready for human consumption. And I don't believe that this is what God intended for us. He doesn't want us blending things with other things. And we're seeing a lot of this stuff in the news recently. So I got onto Facebook today and I saw this. Scientists get the green light to create human-animal hybrids in Japan. So <laughs> I know the pig face, the pig person here is like... A little laughable but in reality this is exactly what I have been picturing so it really caught my eye I I'm always curious of why God says the things that he does and a lot of the time I'm realizing that he's not saying these things to be controlling or to have some kind of ego trip over us but to protect us and to help us and you know if we looked at things in this way we'd be a lot more willing to abide by what he is telling us to do. So um, I, I'm watching this, I'm looking at this stuff, and it makes me think of Nimrod. And usually I do all my stuff on on actual, um, in actual books. So I have my concordance in front of me, and I looked up Nimrod, and I saw these verses. Okay, so Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. Okay. And then again, in Chronicles, he began to be a mighty one. A mi he began to be mighty upon the earth. So began, he began to be mighty. How did he begin to be mighty was my question. So I looked it up in the concordance and to my surprise, and honestly, it, it was a little discouraging um, when I looked it up because it says, see appendix. So it doesn't give me in any information on began. So I also have an interlinear Bible. So I looked it up and the word is um, Strong's, it's the Hebrew word 2490 Hallel. Um, and basically, we'll get to what it means in a second, but it threw me through a loop and made me start doing a little bit more research. So <clears throat> um, there's two things that I want to highlight here, began and mighty. We'll look at those in just a minute, but... Um, let me see here. Okay. Sorry. So when we look at the word began and, you know, when we think of the English word began, we're just like began, he started to do something, but that's not exactly what it means here. So, uh, to bore, okay. To wound, to dissolve figuratively, to profane a person, place, or thing, to break one's word, uh, to begin as if by opening wedge, mm -hmm. okay, to play the flute, um, to defile, to eat as common things, uh, to take inheritance, to pollute, to profane, to prostitute. Okay, so these are the things that kind of like, uh, those don't just mean began. So if if we're looking at it in the sense of what I was already thinking and feeling in my spirit, he did something to himself, okay? And I know I'm probably going to get a little heat for this, um, but the book of Jasher, a lot of people have something to say because they say it's not of canon scripture, and I kind of agreed in, in the beginning to a degree, but listen to what it says in Jasher chapter 14, verse 18. And the judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and taught the mixture of animals of one species with another in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth and it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted its way uh, upon the earth all men and all animals. Okay. So it's literally saying 
that they mixed themselves. They taught the mixture of animals with another species. So now when we're looking at began, and now this is from, Jasher might not be canon, okay? I might agree with some parts of that, okay? But using discernment, it is saying the same thing as what Genesis and First Chronicles is saying to us. That the word began isn't necessarily what we say in English. It's got a couple more meanings to it, okay? So what about Mighty One? 1368. Now let's look at this one. Mighty. Mighty man. Strong. Okay. Champion. Giant. Okay. So he began to be a giant. A mighty one. A mighty man. He began to be a giant. So he obviously did something to himself. I don't know what kind of belief systems that you have personally, but I can say for me and myself, I don't agree with putting things into our body that don't belong there. I don't believe God made a mistake when he created us that man needs to come and put vaccinations inside of people's bodies, especially children's bodies, who don't have the the immune system to be able to properly do what it needs to do. So I don't think putting aborted fetus cells and putting animal DNA inside of us is going to help us in any way, shape, or form. And I don't believe that that's what God has intended for us. So I am seriously beginning to wonder about the things that I'm seeing. Like, for example, this thing right here. With the scientists are creating human-animal hybrids, and they say in this article that they're doing it to be able to develop animals with organs constructed from human cells. That way they can be used for transplants in humans, cutting the long organ donation wait lists. Okay, so let's use our logical thinking brains here and think, if they're making these pig human hybrids for harvesting these pieces of them what are they going to do with the rest of it are they going to sell the meat are they going to make that also ready for human consumption and once it's been blended with human dna that means we will be eating these kinds of things now honestly this is just a theory this is my own thought process but i mean it kind of makes sense at why god would tell us to stay away from these things he sees things outside of our understanding of time so he knows what's going to happen he knows how these things are going to play out and he gives us warnings so i know this is probably just babbling on for some of you but for other ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear, this is what I feel God has been warning us about. He doesn't want us blending things. He doesn't want us playing him and taking things into our own hands. There's a reason that he sets up these barriers and these, these laws for us to be following. It's not to control us or to be this evil, you know, finger pointing God. He wants to protect us. He wants us to keep our vessels pure for him. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And in so we need to be putting the best things into our bodies. I'm not saying everybody is perfect. People drink, people smoke. That's not my concern. What I am concerned about is what is going to happen to our DNA when we begin to put these things into our bodies. What happened to Nimrod? Clearly in Joshua, it is telling us that they're mixing these things and provoking the Lord. When it talks about Nimrod um, becoming a mighty one, so it, is that meaning that he somehow changed his DNA and became something like an abomination? I don't know. It's really beginning to look that way to me. I mean, to me, it's in, it's it's all right here in, in plain, well, <laughs> kind of English, but it's all here waiting to be read, waiting to be discovered, waiting to be seen. And if we just sit back and if I just kept this information to myself, what good would I be doing? If you're in, the, you know, an opportunity to just stop and think about what we're doing, wouldn't you rather 
know exactly where your meat came from. I eat pork. I'm not against pork. But if I'm buying pork in a store and I don't know where it came from, who's to say that it doesn't have some kind of animal bits or parts or DNA in it? You know, who's to say that these things don't change our DNA? People think I'm a conspiracy theorist, but in reality, I feel God gives us signs and it's our job to look for these things. It is our job to search these things out. So I pray that you use the Holy Spirit to give you discernment with these things. I pray that you at least stop and second guess what you're putting into your bodies and really think about it. You know, why were we banned from the Garden of Eden? It wasn't as simple as just disobeying. I mean, at the surface, yes, we disobeyed, but it's deeper than that. It goes much deeper into that. And I believe that this is all a foreshadow. This is all a warning for us to pay attention to. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry it cut out in the middle of it, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what your thoughts are on this and have a blessed day.